Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Christine, or otherwise known as Loveaholic on this channel. I am a self-taught 32-year-old digital and traditional artist, and I've only started pursuing this creative path about five years ago. I'm still a budding baby artist. <laughs> Today, I wanted to answer some questions that you guys left me on my Instagram stories, as well as the community page on YouTube. I thought it was a good time to properly introduce myself and my art journey and hopefully help you guys on your paths. I'll be sharing my creative process and mindset tips along the way as well as where I got my art supplies and my prints and my stickers for my online shop. I gotta say you guys really came through with the questions because I got a lot more than I anticipated so I'm really really thankful for that. I also wanted to thank those who were waiting for this video since October. You don't know how happy I am to be finally finishing this video <laughs> after all this time and after all the technical difficulties. So grab a drink if you haven't already. I am currently drinking this new tea that I just splurged on a little bit. It's called Second Breakfast. It's an English breakfast tea with marigolds in it and that's so perfect for right now because it's so cozy and rainy today. I also got a new mug to uh, go with it as well. It's from Little Saigon just in time for the Lunar New Year and I love the brown ink and like the white ceramic it's so cute <laughs> i am not sponsored by the way it's just that instagram ads it's got a chokehold on me so now that we're all nice and cozy uh, let's jump right into the q a so the first set of questions is going to be about me and my art journey and i apologize if i look this way i'm actually looking at the screen for the questions and a little bit of the script so i hope you don't mind you're a full-time artist now right how did you decide to go full-time? And yes, I currently am a full-time or a self-employed artist, although my income doesn't really <laughs> reflect that at the moment <laughs> as of yet. Previously, I was working full-time as a barista for three years prior to that. Then last summer, I was able to move in with Brian, my fiance, and thought that it was a really good time to try art full-time and see where it takes me. I do realize that I'm in a very privileged position to do so. For me, working full-time took out all the energy and the time that I wanted to commit to my art and take it to the next level so I wanted to try to go all in while the timing felt right to do so and with that being said uh, going into art full-time is a really big and logical decision so if you plan on going full-time with your art as well please do what is right and practical for you and your circumstance don't just go all in without a backup plan there are so many ways for artists to be able to pursue it as a viable career some might work part-time elsewhere to simultaneously supplement income and take off the pressure of ensuring that your art will sell or not sell. Some will accumulate savings from their previous jobs and then go all in with their art, which is kind of what I did. And if I need some more support, I'm very privileged to be able to ask for help when I need it. I also don't think we need to be pressured into going into art full time, unless that's really what you, it's calling you to do. I think we tend to over romanticize that concept, including myself. And I think it's because it looks like the big ticket item to success, you know, and also that it reflects something about how successful your art is. I think it's important to know that what you cultivate in your journey and the process is what actually brings joy and success. And success is actually something relative and meaningful to you and that may look different from person to person. I haven't lived for very long but I have noticed that not everything is stagnant. Our feelings or situations always change whether it's good or bad. I've especially noticed this with financial situations. I have seen drastic changes within my own family or with other people and I think it's important to see that and reevaluate your goals and realistically work towards them. Meaning it's okay to have to supplement your art. It doesn't say anything about the value of your art or you as an artist or a person. It's definitely something that I had to come to terms with last year and I'm letting that guide me. As of now, my heart really wants to go full-time and go all in, fully commit to art. So I'm going to take a leap of faith and just go with the flow while I've been gifted the opportunity to. The next question is, were you a doctor before? And no, I was not a doctor, although that would have been a lot cooler. I was actually in the process of applying to medical school before deciding to quit. 
I literally sat in front of my computer screen looking at my MCAT practice question score and asking myself, what the hell am I even doing anymore? <laughs> what am I even fighting for now? And up to this point, I've been doubting this path for years, but I was too scared to quit because I had no idea what else I was good at and I knew it to be a safe and secure path. I don't know what exactly happened in terms of my mental process that led me to quit, but I remember feeling like I couldn't do this anymore and I was at the end of my rope mentally. And while quitting something that you've been committed to for decades was really scary, but it also led me down a path where I rekindled my passion for art and, and that's when I started posting more of my bullet journal spreads as it was a source of creativity for me and I kept posting and I got a lot of traction for it and the next thing I knew I thought maybe I can try this for a living. What's your typical work day like as a self-employed artist? So since I'm recently self-employed, I'm still working out the kinks of my schedule and seeing what works for me. I gotta be honest and say that I had a really hard time in the beginning because I was not ready to handle the time that I had now that I wasn't working anymore. <laughs> but I've learned that I don't want to be too precious about getting it just right because my schedule is like constantly changing depending on what works for me or doesn't work for me. And that was a hard thing for me to accept because I tend to try to craft a perfect schedule and just end up being way too rigid and depressing for me. <laughs> my fiance actually had to sit me down and drill in my head that I don't have to pick the right decision. <laughs> just commit to it, test it for a week, and reevaluate from there. And so as of now, I try to work about five to six hours, allocating time to write for my newsletter, administration work for my online shop, YouTube, maybe sometimes Instagram, as well as time to brainstorm projects and develop my art and my art style. It's also really important for me to have one hour in the morning just to make like a cup of tea or coffee and take my time to journal. Whether it's planning out my day or spilling out my thoughts in my morning pages, it has been such a relaxing way for me to start the day without rushing into work. I find that quiet morning routines have been really grounding and vital in my routine. I have trouble sleeping so I'm still working out my night routine but I try to exercise at least two times a week in the evening so I can like move my body. <laughs> I also find it important to kind of carve out the time in that evening to just wind down and by winding down I mean like rotting my brain with TV <laughs> or reading a book in a cozy space or in bed. I try to leave my hobby makings like you know art for myself crafting and doing outdoor activities with friends and such, I kind of want to leave that for the weekend so that way I don't feel pressure to try to get it all in the evening. So that's been working so far. The next question is, hi, do you have any projects that you're working on at the moment? And hello. <laughs> I actually just wrapped up a couple projects. The first one is my shop on Etsy. I have never opened a shop before, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I've literally been procrastinating for years since I've started this creative journey, but once I was convinced I was able to just do it in like two months. It was a lot more doable than my mind was making out to be. Nevertheless, I can't believe I did it. Since it's my first launch, I wanted to make my collection small and based on the things that I love, which is autumn and whimsy. And what is better than getting inspiration from my favorite show over the garden wall? It was also my first time dabbling with digital art. And while it was kind of overwhelming at first, I had so much fun creating it while keeping the show running in the background and soaking up all the autumn moves. Mood. If you're interested in purchasing any of my prints and stickers, I'll have the link down in the description and the pinned comments down below. My second project was displaying my art in a cat cafe. It literally came at the most serendipitous time. I literally just launched my products on Etsy and then I got an ad on Instagram of all places looking for artists in the area who made spooky, witchy, dark academia-like art and I just made spooky, witchy, dark academia like art. <laughs> it literally felt too good to be true so I almost didn't even apply. But after some convincing from my fiance, my best friend, and also some self-reflection to like stop self-sabotaging, <laughs> I contacted the owner and my art got selected. <laughs> it was a project that literally involved the entire family. <laughs> like literally. Brian helped me pick out the frames and the materials and create a plan and a layout out for me. His brother and his girlfriend, who literally flew across the states to visit us, helped place my prints and stickers in nice little frames and made suggestions 
on what info to add my displays and all the little details like that. Brian's parents even had all the tools and skills to make like a beautiful display and to be able to mount it on a brick wall, which what? <laughs> I literally had zero experience on mounting anything to a wall, let alone a brick one. So I'm so happy that everything went as smooth as it did. Brian's dad even drove with us to mount everything together and he was so sweet and supportive about it. I mean, I didn't have fun explaining to my Catholic father-in-law the meaning of my Lorna print <laughs> that was inspired by ghosts and possessed spirits and perverted nun imagery as my reference but I still appreciated his enthusiasm and sincerity to learn and be involved with my art <laughs> next question is what are your hobbies do you have a pet I mentioned it briefly but my hobbies are watching cinema or anime reading journaling and recently writing I used to do a a lot of creative writing when I was younger but I recently fell back in love with it after finding a new appreciation for poetry. I love how intentional and deep that it can get especially with the words that you use to craft it. I don't do any writing exercises or anything <laughs> particular like that but I try to practice storytelling whenever I am writing a diary entry about my day and that's as extensive as it gets honestly. As for pets, I do not have any but I do have a cat that likes to sit on our patio couch from time to time next set of questions are gonna be about my inspirations and this is the most common question that I got where do you get your art inspiration from the most and also do you draw animals <laughs> so my inspirations have shifted over the years and it probably comes from a lot of different sources I get inspiration from the environment around me especially nature and especially flowers as well as the seasons mainly autumn and spring I can also get really inspired by other art mediums like cinema TV or book characters or even other artists in the same field or different field. I love playing with the idea of the Alice in Wonderland universe. It's so whimsical and it's filled with all the elements that I love to play with. It's definitely an overflowing well of creativity and possibilities for me. As for animals, their facial structures are a little bit different than the human ones so it feels a little bit daunting to learn alongside together. However, I'm not opposed to drawing any of them and once in a while I enjoy drawing dogs dogs, bunnies, cats, and ducks. <laughs> Eventually I would love to add animal familiars with my character design and such so I'll definitely work on that when I get to that stage. <laughs> the next question is which artists inspire you? How do you meet other artists? I'm always discovering new artists that inspire me especially on social media but the main ones that really really resonate with me and my art style and as an artist are Loputin, Doll Fragments, Mochipanko, Loyoko, and Coco Glez. While I met some creative friends online and even during my previous job as a barista, I actually have a hard time finding a community of artists in real life, especially since I've started this journey during the pandemic. <laughs> Being isolated and in the digital space was all I really knew and relied on really. But definitely this year I want to muster up the courage to reach out more and collaborate with more creatives and meet those creative people outside the social media sphere <laughs> because whenever I do meet or catch up with a fellow artist I feel so much brighter and less alone <laughs> and more reassured about myself and my path and it's always such a fun time where do you keep track of different inspirations for illustration inspiration such as color palette outfits composition atmosphere I use Pinterest <laughs> I also use Pinterest for reference photos to use either for a final piece or as warm-up practice I love collecting quotes and encouraging words that resonate with me and I usually keep those in a commonplace book where I'd also occasionally keep some doodles in there as well. I also really love using the notes app on my phone just for like sudden brain dumping, jotting down YouTube ideas, art ideas, art concepts, and even just typing words of affirmation that I want to look back on when I'm feeling really low. Where do you look when you are lacking inspiration? When I lack inspiration, I have different methods that I like to go to depending on my mood. Sometimes I let myself consume art rather than create
captivating art and this is especially the case with movies and cinema. I love watching Wes Anderson, Studio Ghibli, and other comfort movies that I appreciate for its artistry for animation, film, and storytelling. It helps me feel really inspired and comforted all at the same time. <laughs> and sometimes I just need to stop doing anything art related and live my life away from my phone. Spend time with family, with my friends, exercise, do something outside my comfort zone like visiting a new cafe or trying a new cuisine or a new exercise class that I've been wanting to try. <laughs> that way I can come back to my art with fresh eyes and a new perspective. And sometimes I don't even have energy for any of those options. <laughs> and that's really when I look to my commonplace book and read all the encouraging and comforting words that I've recorded while I was still in that inspired space. And it's not a surefire way to get me inspired again. I'm not expecting myself to take any action on it. But I think it's still helpful in a sense that I'm being gentle yet reaffirming to myself about my path, which is a huge struggle for me and I think is one of the most important things to do as a creative to keep going. How do you push through a day where you don't feel like doing anything? I had really struggled with this a lot because I used to just push myself through something even though I was feeling really really crummy. However, that method didn't really work for me anymore because it started catching up to me in my late 20s. So if I'm like working on something and I'm like feeling super crummy about myself, I tried to push myself to work maybe like 5 to 10 minutes more and sometimes that keeps me going for just a little bit longer but if I just can't take it anymore, I just end up listening to my body. Do I need to eat? Do I need to sleep? Do I need to drink water? you know the basics <laughs> and i think the most important part of this process for me at least is to not beat myself up which i usually tend to do when i'm really tired so it's also crucial for me to stay mindful and not overwork too much even though it may seem like i can push some more energy out of me i try not to do that it's just so i can stay away from that mental state lately i've realized that i also need to gently reaffirm myself and have like loving intentions and reminders in the form front of my mind and it makes it easier for me to stick to my values and make my mind waver less into self-doubt <laughs> and of course it's easier said than done but I think with consistent practice I can kind of strengthen that muscle so that when hard days do come I have the tools to tackle it and be able to put my self-love and well-being first so next set of questions is gonna be about my art style my creative process and some creative mindset tips how do you figure out your art style. So I think there's a core idea when it comes to finding your style and that is to remember that everyone by default will have their own personal and unique take on how to approach or create something. So for example, if we had a prompt for everyone to draw a dog for example, I would say that no picture would ever look the same <laughs> and it would just look totally different from everyone else's and I think that's just naturally how creativity works. I think it's really important to lean into that while you're continuing to draw and improve your skills because as you continue you'll find other artists or styles that inspire you and there's an essence of that style within you and the trick here is to not copy their art but to mix their techniques with yours to implement in your art everything is a remix i believe that finding your own art style is similar to the way we develop our own personality we get exposed to different kinds of music fashion hobbies and interests and you take bits of what inspire you and make you happy and eventually it becomes a part of who you are. I truly believe it's the same when it comes to developing your art and your art style. When you start, do you already have an image in mind and you just need to recreate it on paper or just the idea? So in terms of my creative process, it really depends on what project I'm doing. If it's just to draw for fun or for a warm-up practice, I usually just pull up a Pinterest board where I just keep like a bunch of reference photos. I usually just just draw and not really think about much except to just practice without tracing anything. I may add like a little flourish or detail to add a little oomph to that character just to get like my creative juices flowing. But if I want to make like a final art piece like the ones in my shop, the process is a little bit more extensive. It usually starts with finding inspiration that like sparks an idea. Eventually it sprouts and branches into a more developed concept or image in my head. At that point I'm like itching to put it on paper. 
character. This is when I go back to Pinterest and make a mood board about a character or a scene that I want to draw. This helps me organize reference photos to keep track of like colors, mood, and elements that I want to add into a piece and bring life to my character. Maybe adding like little details on the clothing or what kind of fashion they wear, food, plants, pets, or even objects they want to carry like books for example. This year I really want to practice thumbnailing so it can help me get better at composition and create more pieces for my imagination or perhaps develop my artistic style along the way. I haven't really done much thumbnailing since I first learned it in a beginner's art class but I'm noticing now that it gives me the space to experiment and let my artistic essence really come out of its shell. There's actually a lot of experimenting before even going into a final piece of art or even when you're just creating in general. I feel like there's this weird elusive expectation that when we create something we have to make it perfect and that really intimidates a lot of people but I don't really think that's what art and creativity is all about. From what I've learned at least I feel like being a perfectionist really sucks out all the joy and fun out of the practice. I truly believe art is the most therapeutic when you just find the space or the sketchbook to just let go. Be free to play and experiment. I think having a space like that to just be vulnerable and messy and imperfect without the pressure to share it or show it is so important and sacred as an artist. What are some things that you've learned during your art journey? As in tips. So this is gonna sound really really cliche but life is so much more fun, so much more meaningful when you're enjoying the process rather than straining for an outcome. I realized this when I finally opened my shop after years of procrastinating and while I was really grateful for the sales that I've got, I just sat there on my computer thinking is this really it? And I was just completely stunned because I didn't expect to feel so unsatisfied with myself. So obviously I went through like this deep reflection period and I kind of realized that I've put this emphasis on this outcome as like this big ticket item and to finally earn the title as an artist now that I'm making some money. But then I also realized that I didn't even define what success and happiness looked to me. And these are really important questions to sit with even if it is uncomfortable. My best friend and I were talking about this together and I realized that I was really scared to enjoy the small things because it felt like I was settling in life. But then he told me that it's okay to <laughs> because it doesn't mean that I don't want more in my life. I don't know what happened that day but something in me just clicked and I realized that it's so important to enjoy the process so that I can be more present and content with my life on the day to day. So the way I try to stay mindful is to ask myself how can I make this more fun? How can I make this situation more enjoyable and playful? When I switch my perspective to curious and playful one, it really lightens any situation and I feel like I can handle challenges a lot better. I love how beautifully the creative path and life can be woven together because they're so interlinked and can really affect the way we see the world. I often doubt myself. Imposter syndrome. Do you have any tips for that? You are definitely not alone and I definitely feel a lot of doubts all the damn time. <laughs> I think there's always going to be voices in our heads whether it's from family upbringing or from strangers that we encounter that always negate every good thing that you may experience. There's always going to be a reason for why we don't deserve our accomplishments or be in the position that we're in. I also know that it may feel unfair to seemingly take up space for someone more unfortunate or more deserving. While it is a privilege, I think think it's really important to be aware of it and just being aware of it is enough. I also think it's really important to continuously reaffirm to yourself that you do deserve it because what you think of yourself should matter at the end of the day. Don't discount your effort because you really worked hard for it <laughs> and if you really think about it, it wouldn't make the impoverished less poor if you stopped yourself or didn't pursue what you loved. <laughs> the world is not gonna laugh at you or scoff at you if you take the opportunities presented to you, there is enough success for everyone and there are many ways to help others if you really feel called to. We're all just trying to figure things out and I think 
you're doing wonderfully so the next set of questions is gonna be about where I get my art supplies and my art prints and my stickers I'll have all the QR codes for the supplies or something similar just scattered throughout this section and I'll also have links down in the description and the pinned comments down below these are affiliate links that can help me receive a small commission however I have personally been using these before even applying for them so they're still authentic to me and it would really help support me so much thank you and let's get into it what are your top five stationary items that you love using the most this isn't in any particular order but i love stamps i love how simple it is and how it elevates pretty much anything from packaging to letter pages or journal entries the stamps that i normally like to use are the basic letter stamps date stamps maybe some flower stamps <laughs> but honestly i love anything that is really dainty and intricate <laughs> the second stationary item i would say is my midori notebook it's my go-to for my morning pages I love the size, the quality of the paper, and just the simplicity of the design. It comes in graph, blank, or dotted grid, but right now I like using the graph paper. The cover also has a little loop for your pen, which leads me to my next stationary item that I love to use, which is my Kakuno fountain pen. It is my very first fountain pen, and I think it's pretty decent for beginners who want to try fountain pens, but without breaking the bank. <laughs> I have the medium nib, and while I kind of wish I got the fine or extra fine tip, I'm really loving mine so far and I love the way it feels when I'm writing on my morning pages It just feels so luxurious. <laughs> it's very affordable and really great for the quality and it works great for me so far I am not perfect. So I make a lot of smudges and mistakes and the one that I love using is this cream colored Whiteout and it's from the same company as the Midori notebook What I like about this in particular is that it matches my cream colored pages I have been really loving cream colored paper lately and it's hard for me to find a whiteout that matches it because it's always like this bright white <laughs> streak and I love that this can match with my morning pages I got both these Midori items in Japan but I'll have the Amazon link to something really close to it in the description and the QR code here too and the last stationery that I love are cute little notepads or memo pads I used to collect these a lot when I was younger especially when it was like a staple gift set for little kids and I was definitely part of that demographic <laughs> I took a trip to Japan last last spring and there was like a harry potter magic stationary pop-up store and i went ham you guys <laughs> i am so obsessed with this memo pad i love using them as little notes to myself and recently i pasted one into my sketchbook with the list of goals that i want to hit for my art style and art development and i just think it looks so much better than like a regular post-it in my opinion <laughs> i don't have a link for this one unfortunately but you can find similar ones in an asian store if you look hard enough <laughs> where do you buy your supplies and who do you use for prints and stickers do they charge much in terms of like my art supplies which are like my watercolor pans and paints my color pencils my sketchbook and my brushes i get them all from amazon <laughs> even the ones that were kindly gifted to me were also from amazon <laughs> so i hope that it makes things a little easier for prints and stickers i wanted to order them in as small of a batch as possible without compromising the quality so i made my decisions based on that for my prints i got them from moo m-o-o -O. <laughs> it's a little bit on the pricier side than the ones that I've looked at and I was actually comparing it to Vistaprint which is supposedly like a more budget-friendly manufacturer with some decent products and while the quality was decent I noticed that it would cost almost the same as Moo if I wanted to upgrade my Vistaprint to a similar quality so I just thought I'd just go with Moo instead and their customer service was so nice because I accidentally sent them the wrong coloring print I sent them RBG instead of CMYK and they were really nice enough to change it and send out a new one without any extra charge and the shipping was really fast too so i really like that i actually have a 20 percent off discount code if you're interested in purchasing your prints or business cards from them as for stickers i used sticker app i also ordered it in the wrong printing format and they were also really kind enough to send me a new one without any additional charge it definitely beat some other companies that i was looking at in terms of pricing and batching as well even though the value cost of these products are fairly affordable you definitely need to also prepare for upfront costs in the beginning but I believe I spent a little over $200 to make my product which include two sets of prints and three sets of stickers it also includes shipping supplies and Etsy fees as well so it's not bad not good it's definitely an investment for sure if you have any questions about it please feel free to reach out or write them down in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them for you and now these last sets of questions are gonna be about just reflecting on my journey what 
what advice would you give to your 20 year old self? So I just turned 32 last October and I've been really reflecting on how much I've dreaded turning 30. But to be honest with you, I have no idea why I bothered because being 30 is awesome. <laughs> Life is literally starting for me now, especially now that I've matured and gained a lot more experience. I remember the day when I went from being a teen to two decades old and just feeling ancient. <laughs> but now I know that I'm, I was literally still a baby. <laughs> there are so many things I would tell my 20 year old self, but for now I'll say this. <laughs> I know it feels confusing and turbulent right now that you still don't have your shit together and that you should have your shit together. <laughs> you may feel so old yet unexperienced, but the truth is there's no rush. You're still learning and being inexperienced is definitely part of the process. It's okay to try new things and make mistakes. There's no standard timeline to follow. There are people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on still discovering themselves and their passions. So just keep going. You're not falling behind. Don't be so quick to grow up and know that better days are coming. <laughs> Everything is all connected and it'll make sense later. Just trust the path. How do you feel where you are now? I know there are endless lists of what ifs, but are you happy? Well, I still have moments where I'll doubt myself, push through art block, grapple with the fear of the unknown, the future, and what other people think of me. I can say that I am happy where I am. While I didn't achieve my career goal as a doctor or even come close to financial goals at this stage in my life, I'm so fortunate to be surrounded by love in my life. I found a romantic partner who loves me for me who is kind and understanding of who i am i am surrounded by genuine and loving friends and family who truly care for my well-being and who i know will be there for me these kind of people are really hard to come by and i try to remind myself that every day i know that career and money are tools to gain more knowledge and experiences and more opportunities even but i know that at the end of the day i really can't take that money with me the people in my life are the ones i want to cherish at the end of my time. I hope that this was helpful and encouraging for you, especially if you're a beginner small artist like me. I hope you got to know me a little bit better. I really want to be consistent on YouTube and make more content that is more authentic and aligned with my art and my creative path, like documenting my life as an artist in my 30s or sharing insights along the way and occasionally making videos where you can draw, paint, or learn with me. However, video making is just as creatively taxing as it would making and learning art. So I want to try to approach this in seasons where one season I'll focus mostly on YouTube and another season I'll focus more on art creation and developing my skills. I also feel like that's a natural course for a lot of creatives and I hope you'll stick around for the journey. If you would like more insights and in-depth thoughts about the creative path, I also have a free monthly newsletter that you can join. I also send shop updates and perks from there as well. If you have any questions, questions or suggestions on what you would like to see from me, please leave them down in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Once again, the links to my social media, my newsletter, and supplies and discounts codes will be down below. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a lovely week.